Welcome back to Supremely Black Podcast. This is your host, D. Rose. On this episode, we will touch in on a small segment from Des Bryant and how he was brought up. It's a very emotional topic. Let's check it out. Let's read something. It's been on my phone for five years. Since I met y'all, it's probably like six years. You know? To say, uh, break, break generational curses. Quit yelling at your kids before they go to bed and expect them to sleep well. Quit yelling at your kids in the morning right after they wake up for school and expect them to have a good day. You set the tone for your children. You set the tone for your, you set the tone for your voice. They will always remember in their heads. You become the inner voice. Don't be the inner critic. Speak life. Speak love. Speak bravery. Kindness and hope. Speak wisdom and truth. Most of all, listen to your children. I never had none of that. I get that to mine. And that's my number one priority. That's, I follow that. That's how I break it. And, um, you know, so, and I do it. I live it. I live it. As you can see by that very heavy topic, man, uh, first and foremost, shout out to Des Bryant for being vulnerable, man. I happen to check out the pivot a lot. I like a lot of their content. I think that they've brought a different approach, especially from speaking, from being, you know, previous athletes. A lot of times we don't really get to know who they are as a person, just pretty much of how they're marketed. So I think those fellas over there do an amazing job with just expressing who they are as human beings, as, as black men. So major shout out to him now. So just to touch on the topic, man, I'm pretty sure most people have, you know, followed us, if not, uh, we, we talk about topics like this a lot, man. And I, it's deep because I can resonate with it a lot. You know, I was raised off of survival, uh, not saying that it wasn't love, but a lot of the times it was tough love. Now that helped shape me who I am as a man, it helped shape me and my, my little sisters as well, who they are as a, a young woman and a woman. But, you know, it was one of the things that I always used to remember talking about with my sister it's like, man, you know, when we get some kids, I don't even holler. I don't even, to this day, when somebody yells, it throws me off because I'm already a little throwed off anyway. But that yelling, I just cannot deal with people that can only communicate being extremely emotional. So to this day, that still just affects me, right? And that, that goes to even like my homeboys. And I just think it's just one of those things as to where as you got older, it made sense to you, but as you were younger, you really had to deal with that. Like Dez was saying, man, like you went to sleep, just like your sleep's interrupted. You started your day off, you getting yelled at. So immediately how that would impact me, especially, you know, my, my, my middle sisters that, you know, we would go to school and we would retaliate off of that. And then also just to keep in mind with how that goes is that your parents may unknowingly create that trauma for you, but then they also tell you when you get to school, don't let nobody disrespect you so in really in a kid's mind you don't really know how to process that because your mama could have had a bad day your daddy could have had a bad day and this is how you lash out because you know you really can't do that at home because you know what the discipline is going to be behind that so being told to defend yourself but then you can't do it at home <clears throat> excuse me you really in a really tough spot so I felt where he was coming from with that because I've been on the both sides. And I love my mama to death, love my aunts, grandmas, all that. But when you're brought up in certain environments and especially if it's survival, you're gonna get a lot of tough love. So, you know, one of the things that I would say that I have prided myself on, I'm glad that my sister also takes a step and attempt to do that with her kids is to explain it to them. Now it's not always gonna be perfect, but sometimes you are gonna get into your feelings and make an emotional statement. And so you yelling and screaming, you really don't teach. You're just yelling and screaming. So you're just reacting. Nobody is getting an understanding. The kid's scared. Uh, the parent is just hollering. You feel what I'm saying? So it's deep, man. It's so much trauma that really, really comes from that. And I could just hear it in his voice. It's like, damn, man, how many of us really grew up in those type of environments? And you just like, bruh, how we gonna get out this shit? Like, how we gonna change it for our kids and next generation? Because I, I pride myself on that. Like, I could look at my nieces and nephews, my god kids, and they know for a fact it's okay. You know, so that's Uncle Football, that's Uncle D Rose. Like, 
it's just a look. And my mama had the same look, but my mama would actually, and God re uh, rest her soul, she would yell like, that was normal. It's normal in our communities to yell, you get your ass over here, you sit your ass. That really doesn't teach the kid anything that they did wrong. Only thing that they knew that they did something that made you react. So they don't know how to go off of your react uh, your reaction. It, they're scared, but did they know? And I think that's where it's missed that is because it's so emotional during that time frame is that I think the most important piece is what I took from it is, you know, growing up in that type of environment. Man, tell them exactly what them kids did wrong. Now, sometimes it may require for you just to go ahead and, you know, handle your business and do what you need to do. But I think the most important part, and I don't have kids, so I'm not trying to tell anybody how to parent, but just thinking about from my nieces and nephews, God kids, and even mentoring, yelling at those kids only forces a reaction out of them. It doesn't force a teacher moment. And I look for teacher moments to say like, hey, hey, don't, don't do that. Don't cuss. You know, protect your little sister. Protect your little brother. Don't y'all pick on each other. If somebody does anything to you all, you make sure y'all stand in unity. Don't never go against your brother or sister in public. Y'all take care of that in private unless it is going to be putting you in a real life or death situation. You may just have to immediately jump in and, you know, uh, de-escalate that situation. But you always want to stand firm with your family, especially your brothers and sisters. You feel me? So I get where he's coming from. And I will say this because I don't think that people are doing it with the malice intent. And I pray for anybody that has experience this type of parenting um, because it can and will create that trauma. But I will say this, take it upon yourself, whether you have to go to therapy, whether you have to talk to somebody that you consider as like a mentor to truthfully break that generational curse. I know a lot of times we attach finances to breaking generational curses. So again, I want to shout out to Dez because I think a lot of the things that we were taught isn't necessarily how it's supposed to go. So there's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with being emotional, but there is something wrong with just blatantly disrespecting somebody, but then teaching them that somebody else shouldn't because you're really putting a kid that's trying to, as their mind is developing, trying to process of what's disrespecting, what's just mama, daddy saying something, or uncle and aunt, grandmother just saying something, or granddaddy. You, you, we have to be more mindful of that as a community because I can't really speak for other communities because I didn't grow up in them. But for ours, I really think that a different approach in regards to explaining what kids are doing incorrectly, whether they're yours or not, their friends, explain to them, us yelling to them, ye yelling at them, excuse me, isn't going to fix the issue because all they know is you yell. And I'm speaking from a kid that experienced it and not just being with my mama, just anywhere. I think that was just a normal reaction is to yell, catch your attention. But you're going to catch kids' attention more if you explain to them of what they did wrong or what could have been done differently. Teach them those resolution skills early so they know as they get older to know how to de-escalate situations that could get worse because we all know how this young generation is now. We, we lack the conflict resolution skills so it's automatic anger, whether that's fighting or shooting, unfortunately. Let me know what you let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're a continuous supporter, thank you so much for your support. All the feedback, all the chats. We're gonna keep going as always. Long live CC. I'm out.